Hello everyone, uh, good morning or good afternoon, uh, depending on where you are. Welcome to our uh, latest IP webinar. Um, today we're going to talk about uh, our cement bond evaluation module. So I'm Ross Brackenridge, I'm the technical manager for subsurface digital products at Lloyd's Register, and I will be your host for today. The agenda for today was, well, I'll, I'll first uh, give you a quick introduction to uh, the case toll modules uh, that we have in IP, which cement evaluation is one of, of them. Um, we'll then have a bit of a uh, discussion in the, you know, the background of cement evaluation, and then we'll actually go into a, a live software demonstration. Um, then at the end, we'll uh, have time for a bit of a, a summary and a Q&A. Um, we're, we won't be opening the mics uh, to have a live Q&A, but um, there's probably too many people on the call for that. But what we can do is if you send your questions uh, using the questions tab on your GoToWebinar panel, um, we can, at the end, if there's questions there and we've got time, I will uh, try and answer some of those live on air. Um, if not, we will still get back to you as soon as possible after the webinar to answer your question. Um, once the webinar is finished, if you, if you want to still contact us about anything you've seen, you can contact us on our digital products at lr.org email address. Okay, so let's get started. Um, many of you may already be familiar with IP. For those of you who are not, it's an industry-leading subsurface data interpretation package. It was initially developed um, to do uh, primarily uh, open hole petrophysics. That's what it was... Uh, originally built for, so for calculating uh, porosities, clay volume, fluid saturation, and a lot more. Um, over the years, we've expanded uh, you know, from petrophysics into other subsurface disciplines. So you can see uh, that we've also got modules with an IP that overlap uh, from petrophysics into these other disciplines, such as reservoir engineering, uh, geophysics, geology, geomechanics, workflows. Um, so we've also got uh, modules that can be utilised uh, not just at the exploration phase of a, of a well or a, a field, um, but right through the appraisal development of that field, uh, monitoring production and even into abandonment. So the cement evaluation module that we're going to look at today obviously kind of sits between sort of petrophysics, well operations, well integrity, maybe even production engineering. Um, and it can be used at the early stage uh, of the field development, well, you know, just immediately after drilling wells. It can also be used uh, for the abandonment of wells at the end of the, the well's lifetime. So in terms of case toll capability within uh, IP, uh, we have a well diagrams builder. Um, we have uh, some pulse neutron modules for determining water saturation by encasing. So we've got this Sigma SW analysis module, which is a standalone uh, analysis um, from one point in time or we have sigma time-lapse analysis, which takes two sigma sigma runs and compares them to, to calculate the changes in water saturation. Um, there's not a module for carbon-oxygen interpretation at this moment, but we do have it on our development shortlist. For production logging, we have uh, uh, workflows for the sort of conventional PL tools, you know, just this centralized uh, PL tools, 
uh, we've also developed a whole new workflow for array tools um, where we have multiple sensors placed around the borehole. Primarily that was uh, built for the, the MAPS tool, which many of the service companies are using. Um, more recently, we've just completed development of a um, workflow for the Slumbergy FSI uh, module, and that's coming in a, an update soon to the latest version of, of IP. Um, cement evaluation, got a very uh, what we're going to look at today. Uh, we've always had a good range of tools in there. Uh, recently, we have also added the isolation scanner from Baker Hughes, uh, sorry, from uh, Slumberger, and the Integrity Explorer from Baker Hughes in our latest version. Um, casing inspection, we have a module which is uh, making good progress. Um, that'll be for processing uh, multi-finger caliper data uh, or data from ultrasonics to um, inspect the condition of the casing. And that will also be coming out in an update of IP 2019. So um, there'll possibly be some other upcoming webinars talking about some of these other topics. Today we're going to look at cement evaluation. So a bit of background on cement evaluation. Um, quite sure a lot of you will be fully aware of this, but uh, just as a as a summary, uh, you know, why do we need cement in the first place? Well, it is going to provide um, st structural stability to the casing that's in place. Um, it can also protect the, the pipes from uh, the effects of corrosion, uh, corrosive fluids. Um, but most of all, its main purpose is uh, to provide uh, hydro hydraulic isolation otherwise known as barriers within the annular space between the, the pipe and the formation wall. By putting in uh, cement, it allows us to uh, produce from the, the targeted zones where we've perforated and not uh, other zones. If we had a poor cement job or no cement at all, we could have a situation like this, we've maybe per perforated an oil bearing, two oil bearing zones, but we actually also start producing gas which could migrate down the annulus, uh, or maybe water, we haven't actually perforated the water leg, but because there's no barrier there, we start seeing water production travelling through the annulus. Um, so it stops us uh, producing unwanted fluids, but more importantly than that, it also creates a barrier between the reservoir and surface. If we didn't have that barrier, we could have fluids migrating into the annulus and uh, causing all sorts of uh, potential hazards that um, I'm sure I don't need to emphasize to you. It can also be used when we come to well abandonment. So for uh, well abandonment, we might be, be placing primary and secondary barrier, cement barriers within, inside the casing. Um, but there's no point in placing these cement barriers inside the pipe if there's not a barrier on the outside of the pipe um, to determine if there's uh, that fluids can't travel up the, the outside of the, the annulus. So um, the other time that cement bond evaluation uh, is usually done is when this this tubing would be removed, but prior to putting in these cement plugs, we would run a cement bond log and determine whether we've got good cement in the annulus, and that can determine where we're going to place the internal cement plug. Um, different legislation in different areas, but for example in the in the UK, uh, we need to have at least uh, 100 feet of good cement uh, in the annulus over the same interval that we're setting the plug, cement plug, inside the pipe. Oh, 
Okay, so to determine the uh, condition of the cement downhole, then we need to run cement bond tools, uh, of which there are quite a variety from the various service companies. But who's actually going to carry out the interpretation of that bond data? Well, uh, commonly there's maybe th sort of three types of people that would be doing that who might be using this, the module we're going to be talking about. Could be the service companies themselves. You know, that could be the, the logging engineer could do a quick interpretation using this software. Um, but more commonly, they would probably send that uh, into the geoscience center and you'd have a log analyst or petrophysicist looking at the, the interpretation. So they would then pass that on to the client who's the oil and gas operator. But uh, rather than just accepting the service company interpretation, uh, we're finding that a lot of operators want to do the interpretation in-house as well to validate it. Um, who actually does that within the operator uh, can vary. Um, there's a little bit of confusion I find that cement bonding analysis doesn't fit neatly into one uh, subsurface discipline. Um, you might, uh, you've got your well operations, people like drilling engineers who have a, a big interest in the results, but they might be passing on to the petrophysicist to actually do the interpretation. Or you might have well integrity or cementing specialists within the company that might be handling this, um, or even production engineering uh, people. So it, it, there can be a bit of confusion there. So if it's not clear within your organization, it'd be very uh, useful to have that conversation to see who's actually taking uh, responsibility for these these logs. Um, the other type of person that might use it is a third party consultant. Um, again, that might be a petrophysicist or drilling engineer, cement, cementing specialist. Now they uh, are often brought in to verify uh, interpretations as well. So I have seen in some cases, particularly in well abandonment, um, that we've had three interpretations, one from the service company uh, operator and third party consultant, just to really make sure that uh, everyone's in agreement with the, uh, the cement condition. So, we've talked about what cement is for, and uh, we know where the cement is placed in uh, behind the pipe in the, in the annulus. Um, but just putting cement in there doesn't necessarily uh, mean we have a, a good cement job. Now, it's a term you quite often hear people saying, oh, have, have we got a good cement job? Uh, what does that actually mean? Um, so to have a good cement job, um, we need to have good bonding between the, the outside of the pipe and the cement in the annulus here. Uh, but we also need to have a good bond between the cement sheath and the formation wall. We need to have good vertical uh, coverage. So we see that bond continuously um, over a, a certain interval. We also need the, that bond to be have good circumferential coverage. So we want to see that bonding between pipe and cement all the way around the casing. What we don't want to have is a situation like this where we have um, perhaps cement settling on the low side if you're in a deviated well, um, which uh, leaves the the upper side of the borehole fluid filled, which would obviously allow uh, fluids to uh, travel through the annulus. <coughs> or we could have a situation like this, um, where we have pockets uh, which aren't cemented properly. In individual isolated pockets may not cause a, an issue themselves, but if those pockets are uh, joined up, uh, that can create a channel for fluids to travel through. So this is what we don't want to to see from our uh, our bond lock.
So from our bond log data, uh, we're trying to establish whether that hydraulic seal or, uh, or barriers exist in the annular space. To do that, as I said, we need to verify that uh, good casing to cement bond, cement to formation wall bond, circumferential coverage, uh, good vertical consistency, and we don't want to have any channeling. So it's only when we can assess from the data if all these things exist at a certain depth could we say that there's the likelihood that uh, we may have uh, a barrier which is providing a hydraulic seal in the <coughs> in the annulus. Just a bit of a health warning and it is important. Um, with, with cement bond log data, we're, we're not guaranteeing that there is a, a barrier there, but they're the best method we have of realistically determining whether uh, there's a good chance uh, of a barrier or hydraulic seal existing over a, a depth. So for someone wanted to interpret the data, they could do this manually. Um, this might be what a typical uh, cement bond log looks like. Some of you might recognize. Um, the problem uh, being, if you just give it a quick look, if you put a log like this on a table and have five people standing around looking at it, you'll probably end up with differing opinions of how good the cement is. So these logs have got uh, a reputation of being very inconclusive. You know, we run the log, but we're still not really certain whether it was good or not. Um, so to do a bit of a more detailed manual interpretation, uh, you'd have to go through uh, each depth level, look at the data. Um, you'd probably have to go and dig out the log interpretation chart for the particular tool you're looking at. You get the casing size, um, the log response, and from that you might be able to tell what sort of cement strength you have at one particular depth. Then you'd have to do that again at another depth you're interested in. Ideally, you want to know that continuously over the log. Um, you'll be checking this for bond to the casing, but you'll also be looking at the VDL to look for formation arrivals. So where do we have both? Uh, so then you end up, uh, when I used to do this manually, I would create a spreadsheet and start reading the, uh, the depths off the log and typing up a, a spreadsheet, seeing where the good sections of each response matched up. And it was very time consuming. Um, you're also restricted to using the cement map that the logging engineer has provided. Um, you can see generally dark means better cement, light colour means good cement. But that colour is dependent on what scale the logging engineer has used. So if you want to actually make your own judgement, you really need to make your own map and m most of the time you don't have the ability to do that. You could send it back to the engineer to rerun the map with different uh, parameters, but that can take a long time to do. Um, there's obviously, it's quite prone to error if you're just manually typing in depths. Uh, you could be doing this in quite a bit of a hurry. It's quite often these things tend to happen in the middle of the night. So. It, uh, looking through these logs and typing up spreadsheets, uh, there's a good chance it's easy to make a, a typing mistake. Um, and there's also maybe a lack of consistency between um, when you're just look at viewing a log and making a judgment on it. You're maybe not being completely consistent over the whole log or between other logs that you may run within the field. So it can be quite a messy business to uh, try and do all this uh, manually and very time consuming. So 
So we've built a software module, which is a advanced module within IP that allows you to very quickly import the data you've received from the logging company and very quickly go through an intuitive workflow which allows you to test that data for those criteria that we just talked about and very quickly get from raw data to a very clear conclusion on the, uh, the condition of the cement. Uh, it can import and recognize data from all the main uh, service companies and some smaller ones. Um, you can build a well diagram from a, a database of uh, casing dimensions. We have digitized those lookup charts, so any lookup charts that existed uh, for the logging tools, those kind of uh, charts are quite difficult to use at times. Um, they're all digitized, you don't need to use them, it all happens in the background within our module. Um, we have interactive parameter adjustment, so we can uh, we can decide what our cutoffs for, for good or acceptable cement are by adjusting the parameters, so we're not stuck using the, the cement bond image we've received from the field. Um, we can even look at that in the uh, bond image in 3D. Um, ultimately what we're, we do is create a table that actually gives you this traffic light. Uh, green is a zone that's met all the criteria. Um, amber is uh, zones that have met some of the criteria but not all. And then red has not met any of the criteria. So uh, we're looking for these uh, green zones that give us that confidence in a, a, a good bond. Um, this can then easily be exported to a Word document, an Excel sheet, uh, or a PDF, uh, and that can be very quickly sent back to the well site um, for them to make a decision on the next uh, steps forward. So before we look at the module itself, so just uh, one of the things we had to do um, when the, uh, developing the module was obviously, if you've worked with this type of data, uh, you can receive data obviously from the various different service companies who are uh, using their own version of tool uh, with the, their own curve names mnemonics, and it can be quite confusing um, for the end user to, to determine what they're actually looking at. Um, to try and uh, simplify our workflows, we didn't want to create a new workflow for every tool type, so we've actually put our, the tools into, into categories. So we believe you've really got five categories of, of tool on the market. Your traditional CBL tools, which are really not no longer uh, really used too much. Um, a lot of the smaller to medium-sized uh, service companies are using what I, we would refer to as a, a radial bond tool, um, which uh, uses uh, multiple uh, amplitude responses around the borehole, whereas the traditional ones only had one amplitude curve. Um, and the Baker Hughes SBT kind of sits on its own because um, its design is probably a little bit uh, unique compared to the others. Um, then we have ultrasonic tools. Um, we have the CAST, the URS, the USIT from the, the main uh, service companies. So we've got a workflow for dealing with those. Um, and then we've updated uh, the workflow to an advanced tool workflow um, for the newer tools, um, the Integrity Explorer and the Isolation Scanner uh, from Slumbergy and Baker Hughes. Um, so yes, yeah, so there's a, uh, so we, we've developed these uh, different workflows, but to the user. You're basically just selecting the tool type and the module will adjust depending on which category uh, the tool is in.
So let's actually open up the software and we'll, we'll have a, a quick demonstration of it. Okay, so here we are inside uh, IP. Um, so what I'm going to do to demonstrate uh, the cement module is, obviously this isn't supposed to be a, a training class, so we're not you know, looking at the detail of every click. It's just supposed to give you an overview of the functionality of the module. Um, so what I was going to do is show you how quickly I can do an example from uh, from our raw data straight through to creating a report. Um, obviously, I would spend more time on, on it than real life, but just to show you, uh, demonstrate the usability and how quickly you can step through the analysis. So the data set I have chosen is a Baker Hughes SBT, um, and it's in a D-list format which is typically the format we would receive from the well site. So I haven't created a well or anything in IP, I'm just going to drop this uh, in here. I can just maximize that. Um, so it's just one main pass. I'm going to create a new well and I can just load that data. So that's my well here, and there's my data come in now. I'll just save that. So let's open up the cement evaluation module. First thing you do, select the tool type. As you can see, you've got all these various uh, tool types here. I'm going to choose Baker SBT. And you can see it's, it's automatically picked up the correct curve names from the database without me actually having to point them at. It's given us a warning that there's a few it hasn't found. Looks like we're missing a few curves here. Because it's grey, uh, that doesn't mean that we can't proceed with the, uh, the workflow. Um, so input data, QC plot. So this creates a, a plot which is similar, similar in style to the the plot you would get from the field engineer. So this just lets you have a look through the data and that we're happy with everything that's coming in. Um, now we need to tell the module um, the casing sizes. So we're actually logging in 7-inch liner here automatically works out the inner diameter and thickness um, but there's also some uh, 9 and 5 eighths just at the top of the, the logged interval there um, nine and five eighths 53 and um, the cement strength, from the, according to the cementing report, is uh, sorry three thousand psi. So that's the strength we're expecting. Let's just apply that. Okay. So now we're just working through this this workflow here. Let's go to callers now. Uh, each of these tab has uh, parameters, but it's also got a focus plot. So you can display a plot which allows you to interactively adjust the parameters for the stage of the workflow you're at. Um, so what's happening here is we've got a cutoff to try and look for uh, collars. We've got to say anything above this blue line is a collar now. We're picking up far too many non-collars here. So if I adjust that, now you can see we're picking up the yellow indicates it's found a collar. So we're expecting the even spacing, so we're missing a couple here. But so you tend to get as, as many collars as you can by using the 
uh, the cutoff parameter, you might not get them all. Um, just look through. So they're all coming in at about 40 feet spacing as expected. Scroll through. Oh, we're missing one here. So I can actually just right click, say new flag there. Um, so what this is doing is it's creating these flags over the collars and that's going to ultimately remove the, the data from the, the collars in our final statistics report because we always get uh, spiking over, over the collars which uh, is invalid data. So to make sure we're not getting any strange spikes on our stats. So yes, all the other callers look fine. Um, so that's created at this stage. We've now identified where the callers are. It's created a joint listing. Now we can move on to the next. The bond tab is where we're going to create our own cement maps. Remember I was saying you initially get the, your cement map from the logging engineer, which is this uh, black one here. Here's our individual, um, in this case, attenuation curves. This is our range of attenuation curves we're getting uh, from the SPT tool. Now, I can adjust these parameters to create the cement map that I, I want to create. So I've got two interactive lines here. Now the dashed lines underneath are actually showing where the log should be reading if we're in free pipe or if we're in 100% uh, good cement. Another dashed line there. So that's coming from the chart. So remember the, the log interpretation chart that we, we saw earlier? Um, that's all been digitized. It's taken the casing dimensions, um, the cement strength, and worked out where the log response should be or where the free pipe value should be. So as I adjust these, this orange and green line, you can see my created cement map is changing. Um, so this map means that everything green uh, is good cement. Anything orange is not as good as expected, but uh, acceptable. And the blue is uh, non-solid or, or fluid. So what I tend to do is I would maybe keep my green parameter overlaying with the expected log response for the cement we have in place. So what we're seeing there is green is now uh, 3,000 uh, PSI cement. But if we were just to stick with uh, 3000 PSI cement, we wouldn't be, there wouldn't be much of the zone would be passing the criteria. Now we know that while well, 3000 PSI is great, we don't necessarily need 300 PSI strength to create a, a barrier. So this is the parameter that you, uh, it's a good idea if you have a discussion between the, the analyst, the operator and the service company to determine what is the lowest expected cement strength that we will accept. Quite commonly that number might be something like 500 PSI. So I could adjust this interactively or I could go into my parameter grid and say I want to make my acceptable cement strength 500 and that's calculated okay well if it's 500 psi the log response should be around 6.6 it's updated this already to show these orange patches now are showing what has uh, 500 psi or stronger uh, cement okay so that's our map now we look at the coverage so this is bond coverage zero to 100 percent um, the lower I put this, the more passes we get. So this orange line is saying we're passing this stage of the analysis. Um, so typically you would set this at uh, 
85 or 90 percent coverage and it shows which zones are passing there 85 percent coverage is fine as long as the remaining 15 percent uh, that's not bonded is not joining up to potentially make a channel um, if you do see something that indicates a channel and you're concerned that, that it might be through a zone that's passing you can simply um, drag on here this is the channel flag uh, and what that will do is it will ultimately even if it passes certain uh, intervals on this flag this will override it in the final uh, board so you can just go through and highlight any <coughs> channels you might see so that's the, the casing to cement analysis part of it so now we're going on to the formation tab which is where we're looking at the connection between the cement sheath and the formation wall so we're looking at the VDL in this case and we're trying to see formation arrivals coming through so we can see this the kind of straight lines on the VDL where we've got uh, no connection to the formation and that would be expected because we've got double casing here through here it's still looking a bit like uh, you know not very clear formation arrivals um, but through here we do we can see the formation arrivals come through so as I see these I can go and start highlighting the zones that I'm as I say obviously you could zoom in and you could spend a bit of time actually defining exactly what's which zones you're uh, happy with for the purposes of the demonstration I'm just going to do that very quickly and move on so we've now got a list of areas that we uh, have good uh, cement formation bond now, now we're going to bring all that together so here's the summary table so for every change in cement condition we've got a new line here and that these ticks and crosses determine uh, which stages of the analysis we have passed in, ter in terms of the criteria for good, good cement so where we've got green means that we've passed all criteria amber we've passed partial red we didn't pass any so this is quite a big list and obviously the, you can see the interval names are some quite small intervals here um, so we can um, give it a minimum vertical uh, size in terms of depth so you know a, a, uh, an interval of 0.25 feet probably wouldn't be considered a, a barrier so we can give it a minimum uh, depth interval of say 10, 10 feet we can also say okay only show me the zones that are passing and here you have all the intervals that have passed all your criteria um, and the length of each each of those uh, those intervals okay so ultimately in my experience when I'm looking at this type of data the person at the other end or the, the recipient of this um, information is not really interested in uh, you know attenuation of sound waves or they're uh, working in the operation at the well site and they just want a clear indication of which zones I believe uh, are uh, likely to provide isolation in the annulus and that's what we've got here so to pass that back we can go to we can create a report generate report um, so the report has a title page gives you the casing details that you entered the cutoff parameters that you've used in cement strands, etc. Uh, 
then we've got stats, how much of the interval passed, failed, partial pass. Um, so we've got 227 feet passing, but when we put the filters on that reduced to about 192. So there's the filters we applied, which was the minimal of 10 feet. So first we have the, the filtered table showing just those filtered past zones, followed by a table of the full, uh, the condition of cement all the way through the logged interval in detail. So the report gives you that very quick summary at the start that's the meaningful stuff and then it gives you the detail later. Um, so that was, you know, really quite quick. We went from a raw D-list file um, right through to having a report. Oh, I, sorry, I forgot to mention you can you can then export this uh, report to an Excel file, a PDF, or a Word document, and that can just be emailed straight back to the well site or wh whoever it is that's uh, receiving the analysis. So, as I say, you know it's. Uh, it is quick and easy, but that doesn't mean that it's it's simple. You know, uh, it's very precise underneath. It's giving you all the information that you need to make a very informed uh, decision. Um, so, as I say, there's other uh, the workflow has changed just slightly depending on what tool type you you choose. Just for example, some of the new uh, tool types like the Baker Integrity Explorer. If I open up this analysis, with this tool we don't just have one bond array, if you like. You know, we have we actually have four actually, so we can QC. Um, in this case, we've got LAM. Uh, data, two, two sets of LAM data coming in, two sets of shear data coming in. Uh, we can QC that and decide which ones of each we want to use. So we've got one set of shear data, one set of LAM. Uh, the workflow is similar, but in this case, rather than just one uh, bond image, we're creating two bond images, one from shear, one from LAM. And then when you come to the isolation, table, you've then got these choices of which one are we using to to pass this bond column here. Is it shear? Is it lamb? Is it either of them? Or is it uh, combined? Um, so that's just an example of how we've adjusted the workflow accordingly, d depending on what category of, of tool that you're looking at. Okay, I'm just actually realising that on the example I was showing you, I forgot to show you the final plot. Silly. Um, let me just open that back up again. So we had our final isolation table, but also at this stage if you hit plot all, here's your uh, final plot. So this shows you all the steps of the workflow we've been through. The well diagrams, the collar picking, choosing the cutoffs, uh, raw map, our new map, coverage, channeling, uh, cement to formation, bonding, and then there's that traffic light again, with the green showing the bit that's passed all the cri all the criteria. So that flag track here is representing the same as uh, what's on the, the, the table here. So just wanted to show you that. Um, one last thing was just to show you uh, the result of an ultrasonic tool. Because um, the, the, the SBT data only has six sensors, so it's the, the image from that is quite blocky, if you like. Um, Whereas if you have an ultrasonic tool, just launch the result plot of that. 
you can see the image that you create, the bond image is uh, a lot more detailed because it has, well this has about uh, 72 samples on the tool to create this nicer image. Um, you can also launch the final image in 3D. Zoom into that as well. So you can look at that in 3D and see how the cement is dispersed around the outside of the, the pipe. That's the 3D viewer. So I hope that was a good introduction to the module. Uh, so I'd just like to go back to the slides and just summarize, you know, so what are the benefits of this module then, you know, ultimately it's all about safety, you know, the better handle you can get on this data, you know, the less likely you're going to uh, have any uh, serious health and safety issues. Um, with fluids passing through the, the annulus. Um, so the most, the, the more rigid a, a workflow we can apply to the interpretation, the better, and we believe this module uh, uh, does that. Um, it saves a lot of time. You know, we spoke about doing the manual interpretation. What I just did there uh, in minutes, you know, would take hours to do to manually. And it's all about rig time as well. You can get a, a an answer back to back to the rig. Um, decisions you're making better decisions on the quality of the cement. You have everything in front of you. You have the the uh, the values from the log interpretation charts. Um, you have all the, the the casing information, cement strength, uh, everything that you need to make that judgment. There's also that you know you can pre-plan the analysis. Quite often, of course, these uh, these jobs happen at two o'clock in the morning. You don't really want to be having a debate at that time about you know which parameters to be using. So it's always good if you have a pre pre-job uh, planning meeting. You can upfront uh, agree what your cutoff parameter, you know, what your, your minimum acceptable parameters are going to be. And then when it comes to the time, you're simply running it through the analysis. There's no debate at that stage. You know, there, there's no, it's going to cause some uh, confusion. Uh, you've already agreed what the cutoffs are prior to the job. And now the, the, the results are, are the results. Um, Consistency, you can keep the, those same parameters and apply them to analysis from other wells or sections in the, in the well or field. So you're keeping consistency in your interpretation. And for those that are using IP for other things, obviously um, because this module is within a wider package, you know, all these results can be combined with uh, other results from uh, open hole analysis, um, uh, sigma analysis, whatever, you know, it can all be combined together. And you can get some insights by looking at all the results from the, the various analyses together.